Hi, I'm Jonah, and this is a Learn to Play tutorial for Yellow Submarine, a classic. I love this song. I'm really excited to teach it. I grew up with this song and the, the movie with the blue meanies and the, the, all of them venturing off in their yellow submarine. And even today, I think of a yellow submarine of being like this amazing adventure through the world with, with my friends. So it's a really great song. And it's also the first time that we've done a duet. So there's two parts to it, the lead and the accompaniment. And the most important thing about that is that the two flutes that are playing together are gonna have to be in the same key. So they can be in different octaves. It can be a high tone and a mid tone or a mid tone and a, and a bass tone or a high tone and a bass tone. So it can be any combination of those things or even both in the same tone, you know, both mid tones. But they need to be in the same key so that the notes don't clash as you play the two different parts together. So I'm going to play through the, the song once here, and then I'll go through a brief introduction, and then I'll move into the tutorial. And in the tutorial, I'm going to move through the, the lead part first, and then, I'll move, and then I'll go through the accompaniment part after that. Now the easiest way that I find to learn songs is to work through them phrase by phrase. Now phrases are like sentences. You put a bunch of sentences together to build a story. In the same way, you put a bunch of phrases together to build a song. Essentially, each time you pause to take a breath, you've completed a phrase. And because in the music we've added these breath marks, you can easily see that the phrases begin and end at each of these breath marks. I've also noted the number of the phrases using these italicized numbers. Phrase one, two, and so on. As I walk through each phrase, I'll note anything that's unusual or particularly challenging in that phrase. And then I'll show you how to play it. And I'll play it at a really slow tempo. And at that point, I suggest pausing the video and working on that phrase until you have the fingerings and the rhythm pretty well down at that slow tempo. And then move on to the next phrase. Once you move through the whole song, I suggest going back to the beginning of the song and working through each phrase again. And each time you do that, your hands will memorize the fingerings a little bit more and you'll memorize the rhythms a little bit more and the song will get easier to play and you can start bringing it up to tempo. These are the notes that some of you may not have played before. So when you come to these notes in the song, have some patience with yourself. It may take a little time to learn the transitions from the note before it to this note and to the note after it. I'll also talk more about these transitions and notes as we come upon them in each phrase. These are the two sheets of music for this duet version of Yellow Submarine. This is the lead and then this is the accompaniment. Now I want to go over kind of how the structure of these two sheets of music are put together to make sure you know how to navigate as you move through them. So if you look at the lead sheet here, you can see that we start the sheet, the music off here and then we move through and then you see this bracket here over this last measure and it has the one through three on it and then you see this repeat symbol here. And so what this is telling us is that we're gonna repeat this first section three times. And the other repeat symbol that we see here tells us that from this repeat symbol to this repeat symbol is what we're gonna be repeating three times. So in other words, we move through 
one time, we go back to this, we hit this repeat symbol here, we go back to this one, we move through again, we move through again, that would be three. Now on the fourth one, we move through it up to this measure, and then we skip down to here where we see the number four. And then if you see this, you notice this bracket is open on the end, and that means that after you're playing this fourth ending, we just continue on in the music. And in this case, we just continue on to the end. Now if you look at the accompanying sheet of music, you can see that in the first line here, we move through once, and then you, we hit the repeat symbol, and we go back to the repeat symbol, and then we move through the second time. But on the second time, because there's no bracket on the end here, we just keep going in the music. We pass right on by the repeat symbol the second time, and we just keep moving on in the music. In this second line of music here, is structured really very similarly to the first line of music in the lead where as we move through the music we hit this repeat symbol in this measure here and over that measure we see a bracket with the number one in it so this is telling us that we're going to repeat this line of music and this is the first ending for that repeat so we play through it to here we play this first ending we hit this repeat symbol we go back to the the repeat symbol previous to it here we move through this line till we get to here and then we move on to the second ending here and then we play through and you can see this is going to happen again and we move through to play the first ending we hit the repeat go back to here and then we move through to the second ending which is the end of the song and composers use this structure to be able to make sheet music more concise so you don't have to navigate through multiple pages of music as you're playing a big long piece or in this case a short piece but what would essentially be multiple pages if it was uh, just written straight out. This is the first phrase for Yellow Submarine and there's this note here that may be new for some of you and give yourself some time with it especially when you're going from this note to this note to this note because there's some cross fingering there that your that the hands are going to have to memorize the dexterity of and it's also while doing eighth notes which are pretty quick so it'll you want to you'll be moving through that cross fingering fairly quickly so give yourself some time with that now this phrase is composed mostly of eighth notes which moves along pretty quickly depending on the tempo that you put it at and when it's up to speed, it moves along pretty quick. So in the beginning, I'd suggest working at a really slow tempo, remembering that there's going to be two eighth notes within each count. So the tempo is something like one, two, three, four. And if I add in where I would change the eighth notes, because they're, you're cutting each beat in half, we use an and in between. So I'd go one and two and three and four and then it helps you hear where you're going to change notes and now going from this note to this note you're changing on the offbeat and so that even adds a little more complexity to this phrase where if i count the beat if i tap my foot and i count the beats and i clap my hands when i change the notes it sounds like this four and one, two, three and four and one, two, three. So I'm changing notes on the offbeat. It's three and, and I change notes there. So if I start from here, one, two, three and four and. So I'm changing on that, on that three and on that and there. That's the offbeat. So I think two things here. One, tapping your foot is super key because it gives you the, the physical feeling of the rhythm and over time you're really wanting to see these rhythms on a sheet of music and understand what they feel like as you're moving through the music rather than trying to count everything out and that way you can move through things a lot quicker and the reading music 
sight reading can happen more fluidly. And then the other thing is to clap them out, I think is really helpful as well. It's just, again, give a feel for what it is to, to feel the offbeat. You're clapping on the offbeat. You know, even just doing something like one and two and three and four and to give yourself some practice of what it feels like, what the offbeat physically feels like. It's that component of music that is a very physical. And so then the other, the next thing after doing that is I would suggest playing it on one note. And so what that would sound like, again, tapping your foot, if I play it on one note, it sounds like this. So then that starts giving you a feel of what the rhythm sounds like or how to tongue the rhythm as well. And then, and then start integrating in the fingerings of changing the notes as well and then slowly start bringing it up to tempo. Now one of the most beneficial ways to help you learn a song and, or the rhythms of a song are to know the song. And so in this case, a lot of us know the lyrics to Yellow Submarine in the land where I was born. So right there, it tells you, it's, it's giving you the feel of what the rhythm sounds, of what the rhythm is gonna feel like and therefore what it's gonna sound like. So if you can sing it in your head as you're playing it, you can start translating what you're seeing to what you're singing and then to what you're playing. This is the second phrase, and again, it's composed mostly of eighth notes, so it moves along pretty quickly when you're playing this up to tempo. So I'd suggest playing it, at, again, at a very slow tempo, so you can start learning the dexterity of the finger changes and of the rhythm, and then you could put it all together uh, and start bringing it up to tempo. Now there's, again, this note that maybe some of you haven't played before, and then there's this note which is a half hole. And so half holing the low note is the only way that we can get that in between note, that half step that we need in a lot of songs. So it's a good technique to start learning how to play that half hole. And so I half hole by hitting the lower half of the hole. And, but if you can hit the side of it or the upper half of the hole and make it sound right, then whichever way works for you. So, Take some time with these, these sequence of notes that use the half hole here. And take some time with these notes, this other note that's new, going from this note to this note, is a cross fingering, so that might take a little bit of time. So there's cross fingerings, there's half holes, so the notation of this phrase may take a little bit of time at a slow tempo, or even just not at tempo at all, just moving back and forth between this note and this note, and then between this note and the half hole, and between the half hole and this one, just repeatedly going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then maybe playing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just to get your fingers memorizing what that feels like to make those transitions. Now the rhythm here is mostly eighth notes, so a lot of what I said in the about the previous phrase applies here. And so when we look through here, we have mostly eighth notes, but then we have this quarter note that's tied to this eighth note, so it's held for one and a half beats. So again, we're changing notes on the offbeat here. And again, like it was in the previous phrase, it's on the three and, it's on the offbeat after the third beat. So if I clap this out, it sounds like this. Four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three. And then if I play it, it sounds like this. So 
So give yourself some time with these two phrases. You know, be patient with yourself. They're, they're pretty challenging phrases. And the rhythms and the fingerings and the combination of all of it put together it may take a little bit of time to learn. So now we're on to phrase three. And phrase three starts here, and you play this note and this note, and then you hit the repeat symbol and go back to the beginning and start again at this repeat symbol. But phrase three, four, five, six, seven, and eight are pretty much all the same. We're just repeating this whole thing over and over again, these first two phrases. So work through these, and then once you start getting it at a slow tempo where your, your fingers are starting to work, you're starting to get the rhythm, then just start repeating it over and over again because sometimes in the repetition of it, it can be a little challenging to keep remembering what goes where. So then I'm going to skip forward to phrase eight. So phrase eight is, is here, and it's composed of the first part being all the same, but when we get to the end of this measure here, we jump down here and we hold this whole note. So we hold this note for four beats. So that's the only difference there. This is phrase nine, and relative to the phrases we just worked through, it's a pretty simple phrase rhythmically. The main challenge, I think, here is going from this note to this note. And this note may be new for some of you. And it's an over the octave note, so meaning it's a high note. And so you might have to tongue it a little bit harder right here and kind of pop it up over the octave. And that's just a quick transition because it's an eighth note going from here to here. So take a little time to teach your fingers that dexterity. And then you're going back from this note to this note, which is kind of a large cross fingering where you're opening all three of these bottom holes and closing these top two holes. Phrase 10 is pretty straightforward. It, the only thing I would say here is to make sure you're staying on beat. I found it really easy to get off beat as I started playing all these eighth notes and phrase after phrase. And this is especially important in this particular instance because it's a duet and you and the accompaniment are gonna wanna be on beat with each other. Phrase 11 is exactly the same as phrase 9, so go ahead and work through that. And here we are at the last phrase of this version of Yellow Submarine. And phrase 12 is exactly the same as phrase 10. So the second half is a repeat. Phrase 9 and 10 get repeated twice here, so it makes it pretty straightforward to learn. Now I'll work through the accompaniment part of Yellow Submarine in this duet. Now as I worked through this song, I was finding that the phrases as I originally broke them up were a little bit short. So they didn't feel as natural for me in my breathing pattern. And so if you find that, 
and you can start combining different phrases together, like maybe phrase one and two, combine those together into one phrase. But for working through the phrases, I'm going to keep them where they're at because it makes it easier to break it up into little pieces to work through it. Now in the first phrase, we have this note here that may be new for some of you. And so coming off of this note to this note, it's not a cross fingering, but you might need to teach yourself the dexterity of that transition. The beginning part of the song, the rhythm is pretty straightforward. You just have this quarter note to this dotted, dotted half note to this quarter note and dotted half note. So it's pretty straightforward. This is the second phrase, and again, it's pretty straightforward, like the first phrase. Quarter note, dotted half note, quarter note, dotted half note, pretty straightforward rhythm. And the fingering, I imagine, are getting easier and easier to play, especially this note here, because it's, it comes up a lot in this song. So I imagine your de the dexterity of your fingers are starting to catch that note pretty easily. Phrases three and four are exact replicas of phrases one and two, so I'm not going to go over them in detail again, except to say when you get to the end of phrase two and you're moving through and you begin phrase three, you're starting here, and then you immediately hit this repeat symbol, and so you're going to go back to the beginning to that repeat symbol here and then play through again. When you get to the end of phrase four, and you're moving into phrase five, which starts here again, you hit the repeat symbol, but you already, you already honored that repeat symbol. So you go ahead and move on through into phrase five over here. So this is phrase five, and it starts up here with this quarter note, but then it immediately jumps down into this string of eighth notes. And I think the most challenging thing here is to keep track of how many eighth notes you've played of each note. So, I actually count it out in my head, so I know there's six, so I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, change notes, one, two, change notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I, I actually count it because in order to keep track, because my eyes can't follow it fast enough. So if your eyes follow it fast enough and that works for you, that's great. For me, I really needed to count these out in my head. Now the other thing to note is this note here is that new note. So paying attention to the transitions here and just working through the dexterity of each of those transitions so that as you're playing through and you're counting, you can make those transitions pretty quickly and easily as you bring the song up to tempo. So this is phrase six, and again, it's a string of eighth notes. So the challenge for me in this spot was to keep track of how many I've played. So counting them really helped me for that. So there's six followed by two, followed by six. And then working through the fingerings, memorizing the transitions so that it's really quick to make those transitions. Because when you're playing this up to tempo, it goes pretty quickly. Now, when I was playing through this, I found combining phrases five and six into one phrase worked really well for my natural breathing patterns. And so if you find that's easier for you, go ahead and do that. This is phrase seven, 
and it's pretty much the exact same thing as phrase five. The only difference is that in phrase five, you played a quarter note and then moved into these eighth notes. And in phrase seven, you're playing these two eighth notes and then you hit the repeat symbol and you move back to here and then you play this string of eighth notes. This is phrase eight, and pretty much the same thing as phrase six. This measure is exactly the same. And then when you get to the end of it, you jump down here, because we're now at the second ending. And then we play through this string of eighth notes. Here we are at phrase nine, and it's pretty straightforward rhythmically. It's all quarter notes. But there's two notes that some of you may not have played before. This one that we've seen throughout the sheet of music. And then there's this one, which we haven't seen before till this point. Now there's no cross fingering going in and out of this note. It's simply just opening and closing holes. But as always with new notes, give yourself some time go through the sequence without playing, just doing the action with your fingers and then playing it at whatever tempo works for you and then start integrating it into the phrase. So this is phrase 10, and the first measure is exactly the same as the second measure in phrase 9, and the second measure, which is the first ending here, is the same as the first measure in phrase 9. So you just played both of these, so in basically the same information applies to them. And the one thing that for some reason I had a little challenge with here is when coming off of this first measure and moving into the second measure, so going from this note to this note, my fingers wanted to open up more than just the bottom hole because that's all you're opening when you transition from this note to this note. And I think it was because I was just coming off of this, this string of up and down sequences. So my uh, my fingers were in this mode of this pattern of, you know, open, having open one, open two, close two, close one, and going back and forth that way. And then when it went to going from this note to this note, where I'm just opening one hole, my fingers wanted to keep following that pattern. So. I just think it's helpful for you to hear where my challenges are in the song as well so that you know that it's um, common to have challenges when you're learning a new song. So at the end of phrase 10 here, we hit this repeat symbol. And we played through the first ending. The repeat symbol says, go back to the next closest repeat symbol that you see, which is here, and play through again. So that's what we'll do in phrase 11 and 12. So phrase 11 is exactly the same as phrase 9, so I'm not going to go over it again. 
and it's a pretty straightforward phrase as well once you get the up and down pattern going. So we move on to phrase 12, which is pretty much the same as phrase 10. The first measure is exactly the same, and, but in phrase 12 we're going to play the second ending, the final part of the song. And so the second ending is just a little different in the up and down pattern that you're going to be playing. So just take note of that as you go to play through this phrase. Now this is an easier arrangement of Yellow Submarine than the original song. And one of the things that happens in it is it really only plays through the first verse chorus in the actual song. It, it keeps going on and probably three times in total. Once you're comfortable with the song and you get to the end, maybe add some more verses and choruses into it. Maybe you go back to the beginning and you play through the verse one time and then you play the chorus again and then maybe you go back to the beginning and do that same thing again and that way if you know the original song it might start feeling a little more like the complete original song but feel free to play with it in any of those ways the verse and the chorus are somewhat are very distinct in the song and very s separated so you can really kind of play with how many times you play the verse how many times you play the chorus and go back and forth uh, uh, in order to extend the song or make it sound like the original or create your own arrangement around it <laughs> 